Hi everyone! In this video, we will explore the architecture of Apache Iceberg and learn how it manages and stores metadata efficiently. Apache Iceberg is an open table format for huge analytic datasets. It enables the handling of petabyte scale tables with high performance, reliability, and ease of use. Unlike traditional storage formats, Iceberg is designed to work with cloud data warehouses and data lakes. An Iceberg table consists of multiple components, data files, manifests, manifest lists, and metadata files. Each of these components plays a crucial role in the architecture. Data files in Iceberg are the physical files that store the actual data. These files are typically stored in formats like Parquet or ORC, optimized for efficient reading and writing. Manifests are metadata files that list the data files included in a table snapshot. Each manifest file includes file level statistics and partition information. Manifest lists are higher level metadata files that list all the manifests in a snapshot. The metadata file is the core of Iceberg's architecture. It tracks table schema, partition information, snapshots, and other metadata information. Each time the table is modified, a new metadata file is created, ensuring that changes are atomic and easily reversible. Snapshots capture the state of a table at a specific point in time. Each snapshot includes references to manifest lists, which in turn references the data files. This structure allows Iceberg to perform efficient time travel queries and rollbacks. Iceberg's architecture offers several benefits, including improved query performance, efficient metadata management, and support for ACID transactions. Its design makes it ideal for large-scale data analytics in modern cloud environments. That's a brief kind of abstract overview of Apache Iceberg's architecture and how it efficiently stores and manages metadata. But if you're anything like me, you want a concrete example to really understand how it all works. Let's see what happens under the hood when we create an Iceberg table and then add some records to it. Suppose I create a table using the following SQL command. This will create an Iceberg table called aircraft with four columns, tail number, description, class, and year. Let's pull up a portion of our old friend the Iceberg architecture diagram to see what happens after I execute the create table statement. First, a metadata file with a snapshot that we'll call S0 is created in the metadata layer. A manifest list is also created, but it isn't referencing any files yet because my table has no data. The catalog entry for aircraft's current metadata pointer is then updated to point to the path of this new metadata file. And just for kicks, if I look at the resulting directory and file structure in Amazon S3, I can see the same thing. So here inside my schema directory, I have a new folder for my table. And then if I go into that folder, I have a metadata folder. And then in there, you can see my two files. The JSON file is the metadata file, which houses the details about the current snapshot. And then the Avro file is the manifest list. To make things a bit more interesting, let's see what happens when I insert some records into my table. Here's the SQL I'm using. Back to the iceberg diagram to see what happens when I execute this statement. Keep in mind that we're starting with the structure pictured, where we already have a metadata file with a snapshot and a manifest list. When I execute the SQL to insert records into my table, a data file is created. This file can be in ORC, Parquet, or Avro format, but the default is Parquet. Next, a manifest file that points to the data file is created. This file includes additional details and statistics. Then a manifest list is created that points to the manifest file. This list also includes additional details and statistics. Next, a new metadata file is created based on the previous metadata file. This new file includes a new snapshot, which we'll call S1, and also keeps track of the previous snapshot, S0. This metadata file points to the manifest list. Finally, the value of the current metadata pointer for the table is atomically updated in the catalog to now point to this new metadata file. Let's head back to the S3 bucket to see the view from there. I'm in the directory for the aircraft table, and you can see I now have a data folder in addition to the metadata folder. If I quickly look inside, I can see the data file which is in Parquet format. And now going to the metadata folder, I have my two JSON files at the top here, which are the two metadata files. And then if I scroll down, I can see three Avro files here. The two that begin with snap are the manifest lists, and then this third one is the manifest file. There's definitely a lot more to unpack and explore here, but the goal for this video was to give you a basic understanding of the way an iceberg table is structured. I would encourage you to continue the learning by taking some of our hands-on iceberg tutorials. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.